Hello students and welcome back to our class. In this video, we will continue, we will continue our discussion on our sixth topic under sexual self. So, in this video, we will focus on responsible parenthood and family planning. So, pag-uusapan natin dito yung different types of family planning. Okay, different methods and family planning. Ano yung importance ng family planning? And ano yung current situation then in our country in terms of population? Okay, ano yung mga options available to us? So, before we proceed, I want you to think about this. Okay. Ano ba yung gusto nyo for your family? What's your ideal type of family? Is this A, B, or C? Okay. We have to recognize that every one of us, may iba-iba iba, may iba, iba tayong preference or choices or iba't iba yung uh, sense of ideal family for us. In some cases, may mga tao na prefer nila yung Small family, one, two, maximum siguro three na anak. Okay? Meron namang mga tao that they prefer a huge family, a big family, having five siguro to ten. I know some of you siguro ay from big family. May walong kapatid. Okay? In my previous classes, ano ba yung pinakamataas? I think may nagsabi noon na 13 silang magkakapatid. Okay? And if we compare... Most of the time then, marami yung or big yung family ng mga parents natin. In our case, lima kami magkakapatid, but on the father side, sampo sila magkakapatid. Okay? Sina daddy. Sina mami naman, walo sila. So, ganun yung nangyayari. And lastly, we also have to recognize that there are couples who prefer not to have babies. Okay? Or children. I know just recently, actually, just last week, I was chatting with a cousin of mine. She was telling me that they have decided that they will not be having a baby. And it's their choice. It's a mutual decision between the two of them. And they'd rather help others, okay? So, kanya kanya tayo ng preference. So, ano pa talaga yung family? How do we define family? Family is composed of what? Most of the time, we define a family as composed of a couple and a child. Okay. Anong tawag natin dun sa couple? We call them parents. Pero, sino ba yung parents? How do we define parents? So, key terms. Parent is a person who has a child. A person who brings up and cares for another. No mention kung kailangan ba biological. You can be a parent to an adoptive child. Okay? O kaya naman, you act as a parent for a pamangkin, for example. So, based on this definition, a person who brings up and cares for another, specifically a child. Okay? Ngayon, before we focus on responsible parenthood, we also have to define what is parenthood. Okay? According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, Parenthood is the state of being a parent. Okay? Para maging mag magulang, di ba? Ganun yung Tagalog word for a parent. So, when we say responsible parenthood, it's about being a parent and being responsible. How do we become responsible? Okay? So, according to the directional plan of PAPCOM, Ano ba yung responsible parenthood? The will and ability of parents to respond to the needs and aspirations of the family and children. A shared responsibility of the husband and the wife to determine and achieve the desired number, spacing, and timing of their children according to, before we proceed with that, isa-isahin muna natin yun. Shared responsibility. So, ibig sabihin, you recognize that the responsibility of raising a kid or a child is shared between the parents. Okay? The mother and the father. Or in some cases, the father and the father. The mother and the mother. Okay? And 
Finocus din dito to determine and achieve una, desired number. When we're concerned sa responsible parenthood, concerned tayo sa ilan ba yung gusto nyo maging anak. Okay? Dalawa? Tatlo? Gusto nyo sampu? Okay? Kinse? Depende sa inyo. So, in terms of responsible parenthood, unang inaalam natin dito, ilan ba yung target nyo na anak? Spacing. Pwedeng tatlo yung target nyo na anak, pero gusto nyo every year meron. Diba? Hapit kayo. Gusto nyo magkakalapit lang yung age. Kasi feeling nyo, feeling nyo sa sarili nyo, gusto nyo maaga pa lang, magkaanak na kayo. So, magkakadikit yung age para malalapit din sa inyo. That's possible. Okay? Pwede namang sabihin na dalawa yung gusto nyo, pero gusto nyo, for example, 10 years ang pagitan. So, aside from the number, you're also concerned with the spacing. Gano'ng kalayo yung pagitan sa edad ng mga magiging anak nyo? And lastly, timing. Kailan? Gusto nyo ba while you are in college? Hopefully not, kasi, di ba? As much as possible, taposin muna sana yung studies. Or gusto nyo ba immediately after graduation? O gusto nyo, kailangan ko munang tapusin yung master's ko. O kaya gusto nyo 10 years after your marriage kasi you still want to enjoy the world with it uh, with the two of you alone muna. Okay, so may tatlong bagay tayong kinoconsider. We have, ilan yung desired number? Ilan yung pagitan? Okay, gano'ng katagal? And, kailan? Kailan nyo siya gustong mangyari? Okay? And according to five different things. There are five different things to consider when we're talking about responsible parenthood. First, we have aspirations. What's your aspirations in life? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng aspirations? Ibig sabihin, future goals. So, it's something you have to talk about. Diba? Um, gusto ko munang makagraduate ng PhD bago magkaanak. Why not? Diba? O kaya gusto ko magkaanak kaagad at an early age para we can enjoy our retirement. Okay, magkakaiba yun. And that should be a mutual decision between the couple. Okay, aspiration. Ano ba ang plano mo sa buhay? Ano ba ang balak mo sa buhay? And where does your kid fit in in all of this? Okay? Next, psychological preparedness. And I cannot stress this enough. Okay? You should be prepared to have kids. Okay? All these preparations. I know I'm not yet a mother, but I hear stories, di ba? Dapat you are psychologically prepared. Hindi yung parang ayaw na niya ata sa akin, kailangan mabuntis ako para mapikot siya. That's not a reason. Kasi the marriage is bound to fail. And it would affect a child. Okay? Hindi sagot ang bata sa isang failing relationship. Please don't involve a child if you're still not okay with each other. Ano? Sa aspiration, psychological preparedness, health status. Ilan ba yung kayang ipanganak? Diba? I think, correct me if I'm wrong, pero ang alam ko kung sa sarian, limited lang yung pwede niyong maging anak. Yung number of times na pwede kasi yung mga anak ang babae after a cesarean. Okay? Health status. Kaya ba to bear a child? Ilan? Ganon nakatanda yung couple? Okay? Kaya pa ba ang sampo kung nag-start kayo at an age of 50? Okay. You have to consider your health status. Especially, aside from that, diba, you also have to consider ano yung magiging health din ng magiging anak niyo. Sociocultural, whether we like it or not, we have to consider our society, our culture. Ano ba yung accepted number in your country? In some cases, meron, although it was scrapped already, previously nagkaroon ng one-child policy ang China. Okay? So, big sabihin, as much, uh, the government does not encourage you to have a big family. Okay? Economic, syempre. Okay, based on your salary combined, sa sweldo nyo pareho, kaya nyo bang mag-raise ng 10 kids? O baka naman hindi nga enough to raise one child? Okay. You have to make sure, eto, 
it's a personal matter, okay? You have to make sure na kaya nyo yung pag-graduate yung anak nyo lahat sila. Okay? Financially, aside from education, pag nagkasakit ba sila, kaya natin i-shoulder? So, you have to consider your economic standing. Okay? Responsible parenthood comes with proper planning. Hindi siya in a snap, gusto mo na. If you want to be a responsible parent, you have to talk about this and you have to plan this. Okay? So, planning. It's the art or process of making a plan to achieve or do something. Diba nga? For example, meron tayong picnic, minaplano natin, di ba? Sino magdadala ng pagkain? Sino magdadala ng alak? That should also be an important part of family. Hindi yung alak, okay? Yung planning, okay? So, bakit ba importante yung pagpaplano? Una, there's increase if efficiency. Okay? Nagkakaroon ng increase ng efficiency when you plan. Kasi makikita nyo, parang hindi natin kaya ng ganito harami. So, perhaps, pag nakatatlo na tayong anak, let's consider different um, family planning methods. Okay? Reduce risk. Kasi baka naman mamaya, hindi nyo pinag-uusapan, meron palang health risk. Proper organization and right direction. Ito yung mga um, importance of planning. And it also applies to family planning. Family planning, ano ba yung family planning? Ganyan ako pa sinasabi. A program that enables parents to deliberately and responsibly decide the number and spacing of their children. Hindi bahala na pag nabuntis, sandyan na yan, panindigan. Okay, pinagplanuhan, ilan, kailan, gano katagal. It's an expression of responsible parenting based on informed choices and decisions of couples based on their social and economic capacity. Okay, when we talk about family planning, ibig sabihin, informed choices. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin, you made your decision not just based on hunch, or gut feel. Ay, gusto ko lang. Ay, feeling ko okay to. Ibig sabihin, pinag-aralan yung mabuti. Nag-research kayo. Gano ba kamahal ang mga anak? Kaya ba natin ang sampo? Magkano na ngayon ang tuition? Things like that. So, dapat informed decision. Ano yung purpose ng family planning? To prevent unwanted pregnancy. Oh, kahit hindi na unwanted, medyo masakit ata yung word na unwanted. Unplanned pregnancy. Hindi plinano. At dahil hindi plinano, it messed with our financial capacity. O kaya with our aspirations. Hindi nyo plinano mabuntis, nasa college pa lang. So, hindi nakagraduate. Okay? Or have to stop attending classes. Okay? Kaya may importante yung family planning. Informed decision on the desired number of children and also, again, child spacing. Ano ba yung importance ng family planning for individuals? Improved maternal and infant health. Okay, so maganda yung magiging epekto niya sa nanay specifically at sa anak. Expanded opportunities for women's education, employment, and social participation. Hindi naman natin sinasabi na pag nagkaanak na, hindi na pwede mag-aral o hindi na pwede mag magtrabaho o hindi na pwede magkaroon ng participation sa society. Pero, during pregnancy, particularly, nalilimit. Okay? And if you conduct family planning or nag-family planning kayo, may paplano nyo yung timeline. Hindi lang about your child, but as well as your aspirations in life. Ngayon, plano nyo sa buhay. Okay. Reduced exposure to health risk and reduced resource to uh, resource to abortion. Kasi nga, kung plinano siya, why would you abort it? Diba? So, those are the importance of family planning to individuals. Paano naman sa families? Okay. In terms of families, ano yung advantage or importance of family planning? 
reduced competition and dilution of resources. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Kung konti lang kayo sa family, konti lang kayo mag-share ng resources within the family. Okay? Isa lang anak nyo, for example, you've decided, isa lang yung anak nyo, isa lang yung kailangan yung pag-arali. So, yung resources nyo, no, nakafocus sa inyo at sa anak nyo na isa. Pero let's say, sampu yung anak nyo, kaya nyo ba silang pag-arali ng sabay-sabay? Siyempre, in a way, it's like competing for the resource. At ano yung resource na tinutukoy ko dito? Financial resource or budget for education. Isipin mo na lang to, pumili ka ng uh, isang kilong hot dog, for example. Okay, tapos nagprito ka ng sampo. Parang madami ata. Depende kung ilan kayo sa family. Nagprito ka ng sampo. Ang anak mo, for example, ay sampo din. Ibig sabihin, hindi na kayo pwedeng magtigitigis sa ng hot dog. Diba? As compared kung asa lang yung anak nyo. Mababaw na example, but I want you to see it. Uh, I want you to look at it that way. Diba? Parang yung resources. Ganun yung resources. Mas marami kayo, the more you have to compete with each other in terms of resources. Reduction in household's poverty. Kasi nga, Diba? You don't have to compete with the resources. At limited yung resources na available sa atin. More possibility of shared decision making. Mas nakakapag-ask tayo ng opinion within the family. Do you think this is okay? Okay, makakonsult natin yung mga bata. For the society, okay? Excuse me. For the society, ano yung importance ng family planning? The standards of living and human welfare. Mas mataas. Okay? Economic productivity, natural resources, and environment. Okay? We share the same limited resources. At mas marami ang population with increase of, uh, uh, with increase of the population or with population growth, mas kailangan natin yung resources provided by us, provided to us by the environment. Okay? So, why is family planning important in the Philippines? Bakit nga ba kailangan natin ng family planning sa bansa? Look at this pop Philippine population from 1990 to 2020. From 60.70 million, we now have 109.58 million. That's the estimated Philippine 2020 Philippine 2020 population at mid-year according to UN. Okay. 109.58. Parang ang laki lang ng Pilipinas para pagkasayin tayo lahat, di ba? So, we are competing with the resources. At kailangan mag-allocate ng budget ng government for all of us. For our education, for our health, for our protection. So, it concerns the government, hindi lang yung individual, hindi lang yung family, but as well as the country. Importante rin ang family planning in terms of maternal mortality rate. Okay? So, kung mapansin nyo, in the 1990, maternal mortality ratio was 209 per 100,000 live births. And since the introduction of family planning, medyo bumababa yung trend na yun. Pero nagkaroon ng increase somewhere in 2011. And it's actually higher than the figure in 1990. Bakit importante ang family planning? Kasi with family planning nga, we could reduce maternal mortality rate. Kasi nakaplano. And we consider the health in the, in the equation. Teenage pregnancy. Pag-usapan natin ang teenage pregnancy. And last time, we actually talked about this in our webinar with um, with doktora, ba? Diba? Last two, three weeks ago. Okay. According to UN Population Fund, okay, teenage pregnancy has a huge rate among the poor. Usually, ang nabubuntis ng maaga is that of teenagers from poor families. Two out of three who give birth before the age of 20 belongs to the low-class society or low-income families. 
according to National Statistics Office. Actually, bago na to, Philippine PSA na to eh, Philippine Statistics of Agency. Okay. 8% among 1.7 million babies born in 2004 were born to mothers 15 to 19 years old. Most of the time, itong mga batang to, yung teenage na, teenagers na to, di pa nakaka-graduate ng college. Okay? Almost one of every 10 babies is born to teenage mothers. Almost 10% of the born babies from young mothers are malnourished. Why are they malnourished? Kasi walang enough money for uh, gatas. Okay? I remember may mga may napanood akong documentary kung saan ang ginagawa nilang gatas is the AAM. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yung pag kumukulo na yung sinaing, yung parang yung tubig nun, ibabawa, sin yung pinapakain. And worst, I've actually watched a documentary na kape ang ginagawang gatas for the baby. Okay? Kasi, they are not ready yet. Psychologically, physically, financially, ba? So, yun yung mga nagiging problema. So, this one from Philippine Institute of the University of the Philippines. More than 46% of teenage pregnant women resort to induced abortion. And I actually can attest to this. Hindi ako ah. Bigla ko na-realize. Hindi ako ah. Because I know some. Nagkwento lang naman sa akin. After. Nililinaw ko lang that actually tried abortion. And that's actually a sad thing. Okay? It was not successful. Okay naman si baby, thankfully. Pero it's a sad reality. They are not ready. Tapos nung nalaman, ayaw nilang ipalam sa magulang, syempre. ba? So, they considered the other option. And that's abortion. Two of every five teenage pregnancies are unplanned or unwanted. Okay? Look at this. I first got pregnant when I was 13 years old. 13 years old. For me, thing, I, I may sound tita. <laughs> I may sound very tita on this, pero 13 year old baby pa yun. Okay? Ako nga, ilang taon na ako. Secret. Pero I'm not ready yet. Feeling ko hindi pa ako ready. And I'm 13 year old. Okay? What was the given solution? Okay? Let's be honest. Merong tag of war between what the government plan is and our religious people's opinion. Okay? What about it? Uh, the government introduced us a bill or a law to address overpopulation or the increase, fast increase in population growth. Okay. So we have Reproductive Health Act or what we call Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act of 2012. Republic Act number 10354 or 10354, informally known as the Reproductive Health Law, or RH Law. It's a law which guarantees universal access to methods of contra on contraception, fertility control, sexual education, and maternal care. So the question is, are you prepared for it? That's the question you should ask yourself. Okay. Handa na ba ako maging nanay? Ready na ba ako physically, mentally, financially? Okay, hindi lang dahil mahal na mahal ko siya. Hindi lang emotionally. Okay? So this, i-run through lang natin the reproductive organs. So we've already discussed this with physical self. So this is our reproductive organs of a female. We have your ovary, the uterus, okay, the clitoris, the labium minora, majora, the vagina, the cervix. Okay? And for the male, we have the penis, okay? What else? Urethra would not be included. 
the vast difference, seminal vesic vesicle, okay, prostate gland, and the things we, uh, the parts we've mentioned in physical self. In terms of family planning, you also have to be familiar with the term fertilization. And I hope you're already familiar with this since you're already first-year college students. Okay? So, ano ba yung fertilization? It's the process wherein nagkakaroon ng union between the egg or ovum and the sperm. Okay? To create a child. And ano yung role ng contraception? Contraception... Part of family planning is about the deliberate prevention of conception or impregnation. So, doon po mapasok yung different methods. Paano ba natin, uh, makaka, paano ba tayo magpa-family planning in such a way na mapaprevent natin ang pregnancy? So, there are different methods used to prevent pregnancy. Siyempre, simulan natin with the old methods muna tayo. Okay? Way back before, some Chinese women drink lead and mercury to control fertility. Please, class, do not do this. Okay? And I don't think magiging available pa to. Okay? Siguro nga, makakontrol yung fertility, pero kasi, kapalit din naman talaga yung buhay mo, di ba? You will be infertile. In some cases, herbs, olive oil, ginger, tobacco, juices, to they use that to kill. Okay? 1600, French prostitutes use acidic douses. Ano yung meron doon? Pag sinabi mong douse, nire-rinse mo or parang, uh, what do you call this? May spray ka in some cases sa vagina mo. Combination of acidic herbal mixture to clean the vagina, which is not safe. Okay, kasi it messes up with the pH level of your vagina. And it can cause harm. More harm than good. And another old method is that Greek women jump seven times backward after the intercourse. Tumatalon patalikod, paatras, pitong beses to prevent pregnancy. I don't know kung may scientific explanation yun, if, if there even is a scientific explanation for that. But here, are, these are some of the old methods used to prevent pregnancy. Now, let's go to some traditional or natural contraceptives. Ano yung meron sa traditional and natural contraceptives? Wala kang iinumin kahit ano, wala kang i-install na kahit ano, wala kang ilalagay sa katawan mo. Okay. So, una we have is periodic abstinence. Ibig sabihin, uh, you don't have sex, you don't indulge sex for a certain period of time. Okay. Dito, importante that you are aware kung kailan ka fertile. Both of you are aware, hindi lang babae. Dapat pati ang lalaki. Kung kailan ka fertile. So, fertility awareness method. At pag alam nyo na fertile, Ang partner nyo, okay, or fertile ang babae, there will be no sexual intercourse during the fertile phase. Kaya siya periodic abstinence. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng abstinence? You avoid, you avoid having sex. Another, uh, or first example, or one form of periodic abstinence is what we call the calendar or rhythm method. So, you count the days. Simula mo yung number, oh, day one, simula nang magkaroon ka. Okay. From day one to day seven, you're menstruating. Most of the time, yun yun, ba? Seven days. At during those period, you are infertile. Hindi ka fertile during those time. Safe is, uh, sex is technically safe, but I don't know if you would want to do that. Okay, from day 8 to day 19, that's the fertile period. And then day 20 to day 26 to 32, that's the infertile period. Kung saan safe mag-sex. Okay, however, this is only applicable for women na regular ang period. Dapat yung period mo is within 26 to 32 days. Pag mas maikli dun, 
or mas mahaba doon yung period cycle nyo, this is not applicable. Next, we have the cervical mucus. It's normal, girls, it's normal for us to have vaginal discharge. And that vaginal discharge actually can tell us if we are fertile or not fertile. Okay. During the pre-ovulation phase, it's actually dry. So, no visible mucus. Okay. During the fertile stage, is it's moist or sticky. Ano yung tsura niya? White or cream colored. Thick to slightly stretchy. Breaks easily when try to stretch. Pag inanyan mo, mabilis siyang nagbe-break. Okay? So, basically, it's moist and sticky. During the period we are highly fertile, it's very slippery, wet, and lubricated. So, thin, watery, transparent. Parang yung puti ng egg. Bakit? May explanation for that. Our body actually prepares us for ovulation. Kasi during those time, fertile, ang idea ng body natin, pwede ka talaga magkaroon ng baby. Or it's the time for fertilization. Kaya siya, during those times, moist, sticky, or slippery wet. After that, post-ovulation, it's dry or sticky. Okay, sharp decrease in amount, thick, opaque, white, or cream color. So, based on your vaginal discharge, kailan safe uh, magkaroon ng sexual interaction? During the pre-ovulation and the post-ovulation, when it's actually dry or sticky. Another example, aside from periodic abstinence, is withdrawal. So, withdrawal, yung tayong panggap, malamang narinig nyo na to, diba? Withdrawal is not only applicable sa mga bangko, okay? It's a kind of natural contraceptive. It's also called coitus interruptus. Okay, kung saan uh, ejaculation happens outside the vagina. Para hindi mag-meet, yun naman yung purpose ng contraception, na ba? Hindi mag-meet yung um, egg cell at yung uh, sperm. However, in terms of withdrawal, there's a high failure rate due to pre-ejaculation. There is such a thing we call pre-ejaculation kung saan nalabasan even before you actually have your orgasm. Okay. Sabi dito, may the ads be ever in your favor. Kasi nga, there's a very high failure rate with withdrawal. And the third one, under our natural or traditional contraceptives, is what we call LAM. Lactational amenorrhea method. It's a contraceptive method based on breastfeeding. Okay. If we can, or if you can, actually breastfeeding has a lot of benefits. Effective only up to 6 months after childbirth. Hindi hanggang 1 year, okay, only up to 6 months. Exclusive breastfeeding, menstrual cycle not yet returned. So, dapat, may tatlong bagay. First, you have to ensure na hindi pa mababalik ang period nyo after you give birth, within 6 months. It's still safe. Okay, pangalawa, Dapat, you are regularly giving the baby other food besides breast milk. Ah, you have to question, are you giving your baby other food aside from your milk? Okay, dapat exclusive breastfeeding lang. And, is your baby more than 6 months old? Kasi hanggang 6 months lang. Okay, those are the things you have to consider. So, kung di pa mabalik ang period mo, and you're exclusively feeding, and your baby is less than 6 months, you can still have, uh, you can use lacto, lactational amenorrhea method. Very low yung chance that you will get pregnant. Next, kanina traditional, now we go to modern contraceptive methods. Our first type of modern contraceptive method is hormonal methods. Okay, so this involves usually estrogen and progestin. And these are primary female sex hormone and is responsible for development and regulation of the female reproductive system and secondary sex characteristics. Now, we already discussed during the physical self, okay? Progestin particularly 
regulates the menstrual cycle and treat unusual stopping of the menstrual period. Ano yung ginagawa ng hormonal methods? They work by preventing the ovary from releasing an egg. O kaya, they are thickening the cervical mucus, making it difficult for the sperm to reach the egg. And changing the lining of the uterus, making implantation difficult. So, yun yung mga ginagawa nila. Either isa doon, combination of that, or yung tatlong yun. Okay. Ano yung mga example of hormonal methods? First, we have pills. This is actually common. This is 99% effective when taken properly. It should be taken properly. Ano yung ginagawa niya? It stops ovulation, okay? Thins uterine lining and thickens cervical mucus. So, ginagawa niya yung tatlo. It's a combination of the three I've already mentioned earlier. Okay? Ano yung mga, siyempre may advantages and disadvantages yan. Punta muna tayo sa advantages of pills. Una, siyempre, the main of it all, it prevents pregnancy. Yun naman yung aim, di ba? I'm not ready yet, so I will be taking pills. Okay? It says menstrual cramps. Kung uh, you experience, what do you call this? I forgot the name. Dysmenorrhea. If you experience dysmenorrhea, it actually helps is in that. Shortens and regulates period. Decreases acne. Decreases incidence of ovariances. And prevents ovarian and uterine cancer. So, yun yung mga some of the advantages of taking pills. On the other hand, there are certain disadvantages then in taking pills. Breast tenderness. Parang masakit yung boobs mo or yung breast area mo. Uh, nasusuka ka. Lalo na, sabi nila kasi, may, I, I forgot the right term, pinabagayan. Something like that. Okay? Increases headaches, moodiness. Bakit may moodiness? Kasi nga, it messes up with your hormones. Diba? It changes yung hormonal makeup of your body. Weight change. In some cases, sabi nila, pumapayat. In some cases, tumataba. I remember the term, hiyang. Depende daw yan sa hiyangan in terms of pills. I've always heard of that. And then we have spotting. Kung saan nagkakaroon ka ng parang, nagkakaroon ka ng period or bleeding. Pero wala ka pa naman talagang period. Okay. Usually, konting dugo to compared with period. Next example we have is injectable. It's 99.7% effective. 3 to 6 months yung effectivity niya. And you will not have period after 3 to 6 months. Ano yung ginagawa niya? Combination na rin ng tatlo. Stops ovulation, thins uterine lining, and thickens cervical mucus. Okay, extremely irregular bleeding and... Ah, Extremely irregular yung bleeding mo at magkakaroon ka ng spatting for 3 to 6 months. And then after that, no period after 3 to 6 months. Okay? Ano yung mga nangyayari with injectable? Weight change, breast tenderness, mood change. Kapareho ng sa pills. Next, we have implant. So, yung una, pills, in-intake natin, yung injectables, syempre, tinuturo, implants, it's, kitang-kita yung tabako. Pero nilalagay siya dito. And I actually have a friend na nagpalagay when she was working, she was working slash studying in Europe. Kasi it's free there. Okay, nagpalagay siya dun sa underarm niya. The under, uh, implant is placed underneath the skin of arm. Okay, at pag hinawakan mo, sabi na talaga sa akin, hinawakan mo. Okay. Pag ginawakan mo, ramdam mo talaga siya. It's placed in the body filled with the hormones that prevents pregnancy. It's physically inserted in simple 15-minute outpatient procedure. Plastic capsules, the size of paper matchstick inserted under the skin in the arm. And it has 99.95% effectiveness rate. Sabi, Pag 6 capsules yung pinalagay mo, it's effective for 5 years. At pag 2 capsule, it's effective for 3 years. 
So, ganyan siya. It's an example. Norplant system consists of six capsules implanted under the skin of the upper arm. They prevent pregnancy by secreting progesterone into the body. They may be left in place for up to five years or surgically removed at any time. So, pagka good for five years siya, pero after three years, sabi parang gusto ko nang mag-anak, pwede mo siyang ipatanggal. Next method, yung kanina, we have hormonal method. Ngayon, we have barrier method. Ano naman yung ginagawa ng barrier method? It prevents pregnancy by black, blogging, <laughs> by blocking the sperm and the egg from meeting. So, pinipigilan niya mag-meet yung egg at yung sperm. Kaya barrier. Okay, may block. Pinap may pagitan. Barrier methods have higher failure rates than hormonal methods due to design and human error. Doon kasi sa hormonal, usually, uh, may expert or medical professional na maglalagay sa'yo. Okay, and then yung pills, medyo madali lang naman yung instruction. However, with barrier methods, very effective siya. Pero nagtumatas yung failure rate, not because of the method itself, but because of human error. Bakit? sa isa natin. First, we have spermicide. Okay? Chemicals kill sperm... Uh, chemicals kill sperm in the vagina. So, minsan jelly, minsan foam, film, suppository. Ano yung suppository? Ito yung... Alam yung parang... What? Parang glue stick na nilalagay sa sa pot natin when we were kid, pag di tayo matae. Ganun siya. So, it's physically inserted. It's 76% effective when used alone. So, hindi siya ganun kataas. Pero usually kasi, spermicides is used in combination of other methods. Okay? Next, we have male condoms. Uy, male condoms? Meron bang female condom? Yes. This is the most common and effective barrier method when used properly. Okay. Perfect effectiveness, effectiveness rate ng condom is actually 97%. Pero because of human error, typical effectiveness rate falls to around 88% lang. Ang laki nung, nung difference, di ba? Imagine that 12% failure rate. Okay? Pero if we combine condom with spermicide, sobrang taas and it leads to 99% effectiveness. Yun yung sinasabi ko that spermicides are usually used in combination of other methods. Another advantage of using condoms, male condoms, is the prevention of pregnancy and spread of STD. So, hindi lang pregnancy yung pinaprevent natin, but as well as the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. So, for example, pills. Okay. It would prevent pregnancy but it would not prevent the spread of STDs. Next, female condoms. Yes, there is such a thing as female condom. And I've only heard this during me teaching the subject. Okay? So we learn as we go. Uh, this is an alternative to male condoms if partner refuses. Diba? Women have to take it in our, to our own hands na naman. It's physically inserted to vagina. The perfect rate is 95% and the typical rate is 79%. Basically, it's still a condom. Pero instead, instead of putting it, uh, the penis, it's inserted in the vagina. So, they serve the same purpose. Pwede rin maglagay uh, ng spermicide. Okay? And prevents pregnancy as well as spread of STDs. Next, we have diaphragm. It's a latex barrier placed inside vagina during intercourse. Inserted up to 18 hours before intercourse and can be left in for a total of 24 hours. Perfect effectiveness rate niya is around 94%. Okay, typical effectiveness rate is 
But this one, hindi to one size fits all. This should be phys, uh, fitted by physician. And a spermicide jelly is used before insertion. Okay, again, spermicide is used in combination with other methods. The fifth one we have is what we call cervical cap. Okay, this uh, uh, serves the same purpose as diaphragm. Okay, so cups around cervix with suction. So, kung makikita nyo dito, and dito siya nilalagay. Hopefully, you can see that. Okay? Doon siya nakalagay. Kaya, it's called cups. Can be left in body for up to total of 48 hours and must be left in place 6 hours after sexual intercourse. So, medyo pareho yung purpose nila ng diaphragm. However, mas maliit siya and mas specific yung application niya. Next, we have IUD. Okay, intrauterine devices. It's a T-shaped object placed in the uterus to prevent pregnancy. However, if ang choice mo is IUD, you should be in a monogamous relationship. Discuss natin to kanina. Ano yung monogamous or monogamy? Ibig sabihin, you only have one partner. Okay? So, must be on, uh, you must be on period during insertion. So, kung gagamit ka nito, during your period siya i-insert. Extremely effective without using hormones. Okay? Greater than 97%. Will cause infection if not monogamous. Kaya importante na monogamous siya. Okay? So, mapansin nyo, ganyan yung itsura niya. Pangatlo, so meron tayong hormonal, meron tayong barrier. The third one we have is emergency contraceptives. Para siyang pills, kasi ititake mo rin siya. Pero, it must be taken within 72 hours of the act of unprotected intercourse or failure of contraception method. Nasira yung condom, for example. O kaya nalimutan yung gumamit ng contraception. That should be taken within 72 hours. Ano yung ginagawa niya? It floods the ovaries with high amount of hormone and prevents ovulation. Alters the environment of the uterus, making it disruptive to the egg and the sperm. Okay. Two set of pills taken exactly 12, 12 years, 12 hours apart. It's 75 to 84% effective in reducing pregnancy. Okay? Uh, I don't know if this is still available in the Philippines. I know a friend na gumamit na dati, but I think she mentioned na parang bawal na ata. I'm not sure. Okay? Pero California pharmacies can prescribe without a doctor. But that's as of few years ago. Okay? And it's ever-changing naman kasi. Last! Okay? Our last one is the surgical contraceptives. Failure rate varies. Depends sa procedure. Okay? From 0.8% to 3.7%. So, dito, meron tayong tinatawag na tubal ligation. My mother is actually ligated. After five kids, she decided na uh, masyado na kami madami, ba? It's actually hard. Pagka marami kayo at kailangang pag-aralin. So, she made, she made a conscious decision to undergo tubal ligation. It's a surgical procedure performed on a woman. Kung saan, the fallopian tubes are cut, tied, cauterized, and prevents egg from reaching the sperm. So, different way siya. In some cases, kung mapansin nyo dito, it is tied, pinagsama, cut, and tied. Pinutol, tapos tataliin. Okay. Pero hindi makapunta yung um, egg from the ovary here. Okay. Para ma-prevent yung meeting of the egg and the sperm. In some cases, it's blocked using a plastic bag. I'm not sure kung alin mismo ang uh, ginawa kay mami. In some cases, it's sealed using cautery or black 
using a clip. So, yun yung mga options. So, tuba ligation, surgical procedure na siya. Siyempre, kung meron sa babae, meron din sa lalaki. And that's what we call vasectomy. It's the male sterilization procedure. Ligation of vas deferens tube. It's actually faster, easier recovery than tubal ligation. Pero as always, we put the burden sa women for contraception. Ay, may hugot. Okay, I've already read about uh, ano. So, walang scalpel. It's a no scalpel technique. Or in some cases, it's available, you know, scalpel, scalpel technique. Failure rate is just around 0.1%, lower than tubal ligation. And it's actually more effective than female sterilization. Okay? So, ganun yung ginagawa. So, review. Meron tayong natural. Okay? Actually, meron tayong old methods, meron tayong natural, and meron tayong modern. Under natural, meron tayong what we call nalito agad. What we call periodic abstinence, we have ano pa ba? We have withdrawal and lamp. Okay? Under modern, we have four different types. We have the barrier method, we have the surgical, we have hormonal, and then yung emergency pills. Okay? So, those are the different types of contraceptive. And it is important for partners to talk about this. Ano ba yung tingin natin effective for both of us? Okay? Ayaw pa natin magka-baby? Ano yung gagamitin natin contraception? It should be discussed between partners. Our last topic under sexual self is sexually transmitted diseases. But, in this case, I will not be the one discussing this. Okay, this will be your midterms project. Yay! Hindi ako magdi-discuss. So, I will assign a specific STD to each one of you. I will send it to you. Pero ano yung gusto kong mag-reflect doon sa uh, discussion nyo? Introduction. Ano ba yung STD sa assign to you? Okay. What are the causes? At ano yung effects? Also, prevention. Paano ba natin mag-prevent ang magkaroon tayo ng STD na to? Cure if available. In some cases kasi wala talagang cure na as in mawawala yung sakit. Pero may mga gamot para i-address yung symptoms. Okay? So that will be your midterm project under the subject. Okay? So that's the end of our this very long discussion for a sexual self. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Bye class.